economic news. The U.S. economy added 199,000 jobs last month. That's slightly more than economists expected. For more, let's bring in CNBC's Dom Chu, an NBC News senior business analyst and host of the 11th Hour, Stephanie Rule. Steph, thanks for coming in. Dom, what do you make of the numbers? All right, so the numbers are largely as expected. You pointed out just a slight kind of, I guess, hot, slightly hotter than expected number here. The 199,000 beats a consensus economist estimate for 190,000, so just about in line with expectations. It's much better, though, than the 150,000 that we saw back in October. The unemployment rate surprisingly ticks lower to 3.7 percent. It was 3.9 percent back in October. Average hourly earnings, here's where things get a little bit interesting. On a month-over-month -month basis, they come in four-tenths of a percent higher. That was slightly hotter wage inflation than economists were looking for, and certainly hotter than it was the previous month. It puts the average mm -hmm. hourly earnings on a year-over-year -year basis at 4% higher, which was largely what we saw last month. A broader measure of unemployment that counts those people who are marginally attached to the labor force not just those that are completely unemployed, but those also working part-time jobs, multiple ones possibly, to bridge the gap. That ticks lower as well to 6.7%. Huh. The labor force participation rate, the number of people who are actually part of the labor force, actually ticked higher, ever so slightly, to 62.8%. And by the way, that is the highest labor force participation rate in America since February of 2020, before the COVID pandemic. Also, revisions-wise, the last two months had their total counts revised lower by roughly 35,000 jobs. And by the way, as for where the jobs are being created in America right now, health care gained around 77,000, the government industries gained 49,000, manufacturing mm -hmm. gained 28,000, and leisure and hospitality gained 40,000. The only notable sector that had a market decline was in retail, which lost 38,000 jobs. Mm. So there is your recap, Mika, about where the state of the current jobs market is. I will also point out that in response to this, financial markets did sell off stock market-wise on mm. some of this, and we saw interest rates tick higher because what some people th see as a slightly hotter than expected jobs report, which might lead the Fed to maybe have to be a little bit more aggressive or hold the line on rates for longer. So that's the kind of balance in what we've seen so far from the data and the market response, guys. Interesting. Stephanie Rule, what do you make of these numbers? You know, it's not a lot of mornings that when you think about Jay Powell, he's probably smiling ear to ear, but today would be one of them. If you would have said mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, what can we do to safely cool this economy, but not tip ourselves into recession, right? We've had a year and a half of rate hikes, which could suddenly have businesses say, I'm not going to hire, I'm not going to invest, or consumers mm -hmm. stop spending. That didn't happen. So we're actually seeing that soft landing. It, it is a positive across the board, a really good report. So, Stephanie, uh, it is, I mean, how, how would you grade this, this report? Because, again, um, there's a lot of bragging on the economy going on because there's great data out there. And then, as you've been reporting on a lot, there's a sense that it's not actually getting to people, especially young people, trying to buy a house or uh, going to the grocery store or at the gas pump. Um, when does this start to balance out, or does it? Yeah. I mean, it's a really good question because you've already said it. We have all of this good data, yet if you and I went out to dinner tonight, I guarantee at the end of right. our meal we'd be going, holy cow, look at this bill. It's so expensive. Yes. Or we'd be complaining about how hard it is to buy a house or what our rent is. Listen, because rates have gone up, J. Powell looking to cool the economy. That meant to run, to operate a business, it started to cost more. And we're all saying, when are prices right. going to go down? We don't necessarily want prices to go down because if prices go down, mm -hmm. then that's showing a deflationary environment. Things will balance out. There's a good chance that Jay Powell could start to cut rates next year, which would be a positive. But, you know, this is a complicated economic story for the Biden administration to tell, because on one it hand, is. people need to remember where we came from three years ago what was happening in the economy with COVID. We are coming out right. of COVID. It is a net 
positive. Mika, people thought a year ago we'd be deep in recession. And while we might not be thrilled with prices, we might not be thrilled with how difficult it is to buy a house or buy a car, man, it's a whole heck of a lot better than what we thought it would be. It's true, and we'll talk to uh, Adrian just a second about the politics of this, but Dom, you know, when it comes to getting out of COVID and getting beyond COVID, we're not there yet. I mean, even look at the news that's come out recently about a huge educational lag. Um, th there's just, uh, kids are not where they should be because of the effects of COVID. I mean, can you make that parallel to the economy where things have not caught up yet? Or how would you describe the recovery from COVID as it pertains to the numbers we see today versus the way people are feeling? Mika, you put it, and Stephanie kind of touched on it as well here, th this idea that there's been an uneven recovery in the U.S. economy since the kind of maybe onset of COVID and certainly since the recovery from. We've talked oftentimes about a stock market that sits not too far away from record highs right now. We've seen a lot of people who've seen their assets go up in value. If you were actually a homeowner over the last three years, you're sitting on a lot of home equity because prices have gone up so much. You may not be able to or want to sell that house right now, but there's this notion that people in probably the middle class and, and those levels below that have not participated in as fully in this economic recovery. If you take a look at the balance of numbers with regard to, like you said, industries like childcare, everything else about education, there is still, yes, an uneven recovery. Meanwhile, you take a look at things like business travel, leisure travel and hospitality, many of those industries have gotten close to pre-pandemic levels or even exceeded them. We're talking about airline operators, hotel operators talking about this idea that their business in many cases in certain geographies and certain industries is back to where it was pre-COVID. So as to Stephanie's point, this is an uneven process right now. And this, this whole set of data over the course of the last year or so has shown that we're in a transition phase because we've seen just as many positives as negatives. It's almost like a bit of a mini roller coaster. And that seems to yeah. indicate that we could be in a change in trend at some point in the, in the future. CNBC's Dominic Chu, thank you so much. And Stephanie Rule, thank you as well. We